Hi, I'm Emily of British Girl Bakes and I'm going to show you a few different ways to make and decorate with marble drips. I'll cover how to prepare drips, how to apply them to the sides of cakes and how to apply them to the tops using a few different techniques so you can choose your favourite. The first step is to prepare your drip, which you do by making a ganache by mixing cream with either chocolate or candy melts. For candy melts, the ratio is 4 parts of candy melts to 1 part of cream. So here I'm using 40 grams of candy melts and 10 grams of cream, which needs to be double cream or heavy whipping cream. Heat this in the microwave for 1 minute at 50% power and stir them together until it's smooth. If you prefer, you can use white chocolate, and the ratio for that is 3 parts of white chocolate to 1 part of cream. To make the white chocolate really white, you can add white icing colour, and this one's called Wilton White White Icing. For semi-sweet or dark chocolate, the ratio is 2 parts of chocolate to 1 part of cream. Ok, so the first way to create a marble drip is to mix two colours of ganache together. So here I have equal amounts of white and yellow ganache, and I'm pouring one colour into the other, giving it a single stir to blend it slightly to make it marbled. Instead of marbling two colours of ganache, you can use one colour of ganache and add gel food colour, swirling it slightly with a toothpick or a spoon. In a minute I'll show you how different these two options of drips look on cakes. Now we'll go over a few ways to apply the drip, starting with the sides of your cake. One way to apply the marble drip is to spoon it onto your cake. As with every drip, your cake should be refrigerated before applying the drip, so that the drips don't go all the way down to the bottom of the cake, because the coldness helps to stop them. Your drip needs to be the right consistency as well, and I cover all of this and more in lots of detail in my online course on 10 cake decorating techniques. You can see that with this drip, which was made with white ganache and yellow ganache, the colours are marbled but also quite blended together. Whereas for this cake, I'm using the drip I made with one colour of ganache swelled with teal gel. And this makes a much more dramatic marbled effect because the gel colour varies in darkness depending on its concentration, and the marbling lines are much more defined with gel than they are with ganache. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please click the thumbs up button. A fun way to jazz up a marble drip is to incorporate metallics, and for this next cake I'm using white and navy ganache with gold. I'm putting the white and navy in the same bowl, and then adding a squirt of gold sheen, which is made by Americolor, or you can make your own by mixing gold luster dust with vodka. I'm swirling it slightly, and then spooning it onto my cake to make the drips. Now, normally, I prefer applying drips with a condiment bottle instead of a spoon, but you have more control over how much you blend the colours when you do it with a spoon. You can see that here. The colours look nice and marbled in the bowl, and as I poured them into the bottle. But with the pouring motion and then tipping the bottle upside down, everything blended together more than I wanted, and the pink seems to have been swallowed by the blue, so the drip ends up being a sort of periwinkle blue instead of white with blue and pink marbling. So for marble drips, I definitely recommend using a spoon instead of a bottle. But finally, another option to consider is to pour the marbled ganache onto your cake. Here I'm using a measuring jug with orange ganache, which for pouring needs to be a bit runnier than you might use for spooning it onto a cake. I'm adding some black ganache by squiggling it over the surface. Now I'm moving the jug around the top edge of the cake, letting the ganache flow out slowly to make the drips and the colours are marbling together a bit less than if I'd spooned them onto the cake, so that the orange and black don't blend together too much to make brown. I have less control over the drips than I would if I used a spoon, but the marbling looks great. Now let's talk about the top of the cake. Normally I would pour the ganache onto the middle of the cake and spread it around with an offset spatula, which I'm doing here. But this blends the colours together so it reduces the marbled effect. Of course, if you're going to put something on top of the cake, like this chocolate sail, it doesn't matter if the marbling isn't obvious, because you're going to cover it up anyway. For this cake, to try to make the marbling more obvious, I'm pouring the colours on individually, spreading them to blend them slightly, and adding more individual colours on top to try to make it look more marbled. The effect is more marbled than spreading the already mixed colours onto the cake, but it's still not as marbled as the drips on the sides of the cake.
To make the top even more marbled, you can pour the lightly marbled ganache onto the top of the cake, spiralling your jug to cover the entire surface with the same thickness of ganache. The marbling is preserved instead of being blended by spreading it with a spatula, and if you want to create more veining, you can use a toothpick to blend the colours a bit more after pouring them. So, in summary, for the most effective marble drips, I recommend using a base colour of ganache and swirling it with gel colours, applying the drip to the sides of the cake with a spoon, and then pouring the rest with a jug onto the top of the cake. I hope this tutorial was helpful. When you try out a marble drip, please comment below to tell me which method you like best, and if you share any photos of it on Instagram, please tag British Girl Bakes so I can see it. I share a new cake decorating tutorial every week, so if you don't want to miss one, click that red subscribe button.